evening it's Monday June 12th 2017 and filming at Zerinsky Lake Park it's a city park on the western edge of Omaha Douglas County Nebraska and it has a 255 acre lake a lot of boating and fishing hiking and jogging and that sort of thing um, I was thinking back on a song I remember hearing all the time when I was growing up entitled Victory in Jesus and that'll be the title for this evening's video as well. You probably remember the song where the chorus went, Oh Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. And looking back at that part, he sought me and bought me, reminds me of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20. For you have brought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Also, as we look at 1 Peter 2, verse 9, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And we're going to loop around this little path and then head into the woods over here. Looking at Hebrews 13, verse 6, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. It's a nice little gazebo deck. Many of us have experienced uh, the un unfair short end of the deal in a variety of situations in our lives. We want to make sure that we're not giving anyone the short end of the deal. We want to do what Jesus would do. As we keep Romans 5 in mind, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we also have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Usually this picnic table's not here. <laughs> and not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So, the victory that we have in Jesus is because Jesus gave of himself for us. He died and rose again. First of all, so we could be saved. He was here on earth 33 years, giving us that perfect example that we're to strive to follow in our daily activities and our close walk with Him. So when we think about how circumstances can be pretty unfair in our life, think how unfair it was for Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sins. He did that not because He had to. He did that for us. 
Looking at Philippians 4, verses 4 to 13. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received, and heard, and seen in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly, that now, at the last your care of me hath flourished again. Wherein you are also careful but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. So remember, we can take comfort even knowing that though we are weak, God is strong. And our victory is in Jesus Christ. Looking at Galatians 5, Verses 22 through 26. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. So, the fruit of the Spirit is the opposite of what the flesh would be wanting us to do. So, the more we draw closer to Jesus Christ, the more we're willing to put others above ourselves. That goes for, for all of us. We all struggle with this from time to time. Looking at Isaiah 55, verse 11, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. And looking at John 16, 33, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So as we remember that Jesus Christ was the perfect overcomer of all time, his will for us is that we grow stronger as we grow stronger in our relationship with him by picking up our cross and following him daily, that we grow more in our ability through him, through his help, to be an overcomer. Taking a look at 2 Corinthians 4, starting in verse 6. 
For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. In 1 Peter chapter 5, starting in verse 6, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he might exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. So as we're when we become saved by repenting and believing that Jesus Christ died and rose again for us, and by accepting that gift of salvation, it takes some time as we start out on the milk, but he doesn't want us to just stay on the spiritual milk. He wants us to read the Bible and pray and learn through his help how to discern good from evil to help us in making the right decisions that he would have for us and to go deeper in our relationship with Jesus Christ as we put all of our trust on him. Looking at John 3 verses 16 and 17 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. In 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. So, the main thing in our life while we're here is to grow in our relationship with Christ and to show ourselves accounted worthy to be with him for eternity. First by repenting and believing in him, trusting and obeying. Take a look at Matthew chapter 5. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, 
for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say, All manner of evil against you, falsely, for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the, the prophets which were before you. So when we see difficult situations that we're going through, a lot of times there are people around us who may seem to have it easier, but they may be going through similarly difficult times or maybe worse. And I think we can all recall having uh, seen someone else in worse circumstances than us, and then we remember to think of how good we really have it. All the blessings that God bestows on us. Now, he never promised us material wealth. That's not important. But he did promise to take care of our needs. So we're to focus on putting him first in our lives, and he'll see us through. As we take a look at James chapter 4, verses 6 through 10, But he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Also looking at 1 John 1, verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Remember, God chastens those who He loves. Looking at 1 Corinthians 15, as we start in verse 50, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on in corruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be bought, brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which give us, giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ.
Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Joining Zarinsky Trail, paved trail through the park, around the lake. Remember from 2 Peter 3, verse 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And as we look at Romans chapter 8, beginning in verse 1, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage, again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs of God, and join heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And skipping down to verse 28. And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God to them who are the called according to his purpose. In verse 31, What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? 37, Nay, and all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We definitely want to be putting all of our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, as he's the one who died and rose again and gave us that perfect example to follow through life. The trials and tribulations that we face can be very challenging um, and sometimes even seem impossible. But God will make a way if we trust in Him. Looking at Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 4. For the Lord your God is He that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. And in Proverbs 17, verse 15, He that justifieth the wicked, and he that condemneth the just, even they both are an abomination to the Lord. Ephesians 6. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord, and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. And we're on the northeast corner of the park now. We're able to get a little peek through the break in the trees here. That grassy area is the dam for Zernsky Lake. Um, this park was built in the 1990s, around 1993 or so. Box Elder Creek is the stream that runs through the lake. Hope you enjoyed the nature walk and appreciate everyone out there. And God bless you. Take care.